Thank you, Ammon. My name is Chris Bryles. I've lived here in Harney County since 1978. I joined the Burns Volunteer Fire Department in 1979. I took over as the fire chief and was over the ambulance for 24 years, well, until the ambulance moved to the hospital. I have been a servant of this community since the day I stepped on its soil. Uh, I want you to know that I haven't had a chance to prepare anything for you people. So there's nothing prepared here. It's coming from my heart. And my heart right now has been hurt. When Ammon had the meeting out at the fairgrounds and a group of citizens from in this community said, maybe we need to have a committee of safety. Maybe we need to do some things that maybe can help with some of the problems that have been going on with the land grabbing and some of the things that are not constitutionally correct. They formed, they, they had an unanimous that they needed to form a committee of safety. Okay, they did that. I was the second person nominated to that position. And I thought, oh my God, what happened to me? I just showed up to find out what's going on in my backyard. That's the only thing I was wanting to do. Do I want to be involved in this? And I will tell you straight up, the, the major reason that I got on this committee to begin with was because it was said that if the committee of safety needed to, they could call in the militia. To me, at that point, it scared me. It's like, I don't want a bloodbath in my county, and if there's any committee that has the power to pull the trigger on something that causes a bloodbath, I'm gonna be on that, because nobody's gonna touch that trigger if I'm there. We don't need violence. We don't need bloodshed. We don't need anything other than to figure out, is there a problem? If there is a problem, what can we do to solve it? So I made that commitment. Since then, I have learned a lot more about the Constitution of the United States of America, which should be first and foremost in everyone's mind, anybody's mind. It has to do with our rights and the amendments, all of that, the history. It is so important. It is so important for everyone to understand what's going on. Yes, sir. Okay? We have tried to have meetings. We have been told that we couldn't have a meeting at the Elks Club. We have been told we couldn't have a meeting at the Senior Center. That nothing having to do with the occupation of the refuge or Ammon Bundy or anything else would be in any county buildings. Then we showed up to a meeting at the fairgrounds where the only thing that was ever spoken about was exactly what they said was never going to occur. Since it was a public meeting, we had the opportunity to speak, and our committee chairman, Mr. Tim Smith, spoke up and said that we'd been blackballed within the community. The very next morning, we received an apology from Mr. Grassy, saying that we could have a meeting at the senior center. Okay, fine. So we did that. People came, people spoke, people heard what was going on. People had a chance to voice their opinions and to be heard as their rights allow them. We've been trying to do anything and everything that we can do as the Committee of Safety to mitigate this situation, to de-escalate this situation. I want these people to be able to go home to their families. I want the law enforcement to go home to their families. I want to figure out what it is that we can do as citizens of the United States of America to retain our rights. Yes, sir. I guess that must be a bad thing. No, sir. Because I was just informed just a few minutes ago by Steve Grassy that I'm an old man,
and I have nothing left, and I'm not dangerous, and that my perception is all wrong. I stand before you as a 63-year-old man, and I don't feel old right now. I got scars all over me, and I hurt all the time. Big deal. I am still a man, and I still stand strong. After Mr. Grasty told me that, notice I'm not saying Judge Grasty. That, that uh, to me, is a respectful thing. I say Steve Grasty told me my perception was wrong. I asked him for a piece of paper. I have been the county fire chief here since 1984. I have served, I have worked with the Bundys, I've worked, or not with the Bundys, I'm sorry, with the Hammonds. I've worked with ranchers all over this community to help with fire prevention, to help with control burns, to do what I can to help my fellow man. I took a piece of paper and I wrote down the address, or not the address, I'm sorry. Folks, I'm, I'm a human. <clears throat> I need to remind myself that I'm human and I don't always say the right thing. But I took and I wrote down the date and I said, I, Chris Allen Bryles, do hereby resign my position as the Harney County Fire Chief. Okay? Does that mean when you quit, who do you quit? That might say that I just quit this county. I did not just quit this county, but I will not work for a government or a person that I do not believe in and have faith in. Or, yes, sir. I will not, yes, sir. I will not work for somebody that I don't trust. Hell no. I will stand before you and tell you the truth. Do not ever ask me a question if you don't want the answer. I've been told by Steve to distance myself from this committee of safety. I've been told that we don't know what we're doing. I've been told that my life is in danger. I've been told all kinds of things. I will not be told what to do. I have my own mind and I will use my own mind, not somebody else's. And I feel that the people in this county, in this state, in this United States, have the right to free speech and the right to assemble and the right to figure out if there's a problem, what can be done about it. I have not quit this community. I have not quit this county. If there's a rancher out there anywhere that needs my services for anything, if they can use any of my skills and expertise to help them for fire prevention or anything, my door is still open. We have to have a place to assemble. We have to have a place to be heard. We do not need violence. I don't want violence. I do not want violence. But I stand before you as someone that has been tried to be intimidated in many, many ways. The other day, a friend of mine poked me in the chest and said, you need to find out what your cohorts are doing at the armory. <coughs> because there's people that had been at the armory twice. They'd been turned into the police. And I thought, my gosh. So I followed the people and I stopped them, and, or I followed them until they stopped, and I got out and I asked them who they were. They were dishonest with me. They would not tell me what they were doing. I asked them what they were doing in our armory, what they were doing. Well, we're just two guys walk, you know, going through town looking for a place to have a business. And I said, sir, typically you don't have a business in an armory. Then they said, well, we weren't even at the armory. And I said, I followed you from the armory. Then they said, well, yeah, we were at the armory, but really we were looking at the deer. There's a big shooter four point in there. I'm not sure how often you shoot deer in an armory, but I asked them to please be truthful with me because I was trying to be truthful with them and that there's too much fear in our community. Push comes to shove, let's, let's just kind of get down to the end of it. I pursued information. I took a picture of their vehicle. 
I was not allowed to see our county sheriff. I went up to ask to, to speak to him. I was told no, I couldn't. I was supposed to call 911. I said, okay, I will call the dispatch. And I called the dispatch because 911 is for emergencies. It's not for just chit chat. Okay, I understand that. I don't want to abuse that. They ran the license plate. It came back to undercover FBI agents. Mr. Grasty told me today that I'm the one that's causing the fear, that I have no right to question anybody about what anybody's doing at our armory, and that I have no right to follow anybody and question anybody, that I'm the one that's causing fear. I stand before you and I ask you, what do you think? Do I have the right to talk to another human being? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Do I have a right to ask what's going on in my community? Yes, you do. This, this is absolutely appalling to me. I've had a lot of, my life has turned completely upside down and inside out since I've been involved in this community, this committee. I have no personal life anymore, ever. I've been told, why don't you distance yourself from it? Why don't you run? I was born in Denver, Colorado. The only place they have ostriches is at the zoo. I never learned to stick my head in the sand. And I stand before, before you right now. I will not stick my head in the sand. And any time anybody has any questions of me, here I am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, um, I do not think much 